We did the front right. end there. Uh, as crop's gonna move from the header into the feeder house, X to S series, if you clearly notice that we have a wider feeder house, it's about 23% wider than our S series. And also on the front here, we have these stiffeners of the, on the drum. And that's just gonna help you with, uh, if you're sucking a rock, it's gonna help protect the slats from getting bowed in and or getting to the drum. So we have added that uh, kind of rock protection system there. As we move further back in, uh, we have a chevron up at the top shaft. So what the chevron is, is in the center, it's like the eight wing fast that's on S series, but in the center we have uh, the chevron part that divides the crop, it's kind of like an arrow pointing forward, and that's gonna help divide the crop between the left and the right rotor. And if you wanna look at that, you have, underneath here where the rock trap is, there's a way to get down and see it. Uh, I encourage you to take a look at that here at some point today. That's how we're able to divide that crop and keep a smooth transition to both our left and right hand rotors. And as I kind of mentioned here, the cab is, very, is the same as our S-Series, while it's actually slightly wider. But the, as far as the controls, it's all going to be the similar to S-Series. So your hydro handle, the Gen 4 layouts we went through earlier today, um, the, the LED light packages. It's, the cab wise should be exactly the same feel, other than with the signature edition here, um, you get to the leather seat, uh, heated, cooled, massaging. Uh, we've got foot pegs. We've got premium radio in there. Uh, basically, comfort is, is the name of the game here. Uh, when you're going to be in the machine for as many hours as you are, we're trying to make sure that at the end of the day, you don't feel like crap and you're able to go a little longer because you're not worn out from having to do so many other things. Uh, something I would like to make sure everyone's aware of that's new on X compared to S. S-Series has the ram stop on the feeder house cylinder. That's our safety protection, it's mechanical. You have to have the header all the way up, four aft's gotta be slightly, slightly ahead in order for that ram stop cylinder to go down. X-Series, we improved upon that. We have a red emergency stop button over here that allows you to stop this feeder house anywhere in, in the travel range that you want. So if you wanna be changing knives out on that header and you want it down low or you want it a little higher, you can set it wherever you want, come along the side here hit the e-stop button and you're, you're locked out your feeder house. One way to know that it's locked out, underneath here on these both cylinders, there's this little puck looking piece. It's similar to if you've ever shot any firearms, it's like a safety. When the, when the head is able to move or the feeder house can move up and down, there's gonna be a little pop it deal that comes out and it's, got, it's red. So just like a firearm safety, you know, red, you're dead. Uh, that's what you need to look for before you go underneath the front end piece of equipment, is if that's pointed down, then you need to come over here and run this emergency stop. There's also logic into this machine. If you're out of the operator, if you're combining, you get out of the operator seat and you're walking down the ladder, within five seconds of getting out of the operator seat, the park brake's gonna engage and if the, if it is showing red underneath there, after five seconds of the operator seat, it's gonna suck itself up and it's gonna be locked out, regardless of whether you pull the knob here or not. So there's, and when the machine's off, it's also locked out. That's why you won't be able to see it right now. If we started the machine uh, and sat in the seat, it would, it would, you'd see the red showing and it would be able to have a free range of motion. So just wanna make sure you're aware of that. So when you get up in the cab and you can't get your feeder house to move, come down here and make sure that this is uh, not locked in. We uh, changed our transmission. So we have our ProDrive over there. This is now the ProDrive XL. So we're not using, uh, that's got two gears. So ProDrive range one, range two. Uh, this one is using two clutch packs and hydraulic motors. So you will not notice the, the transmission shift that you would on that when you're shifting range. It's a lot smoother. Uh, we also have more torque because of the way that this new transmission is. So climbing hills, uh, you'll definitely notice better performance. As we walk our way around here, um, if you want to, so we talked about adjustments and something you'll see in the Equipment Plus app. Uh, S-Series, If you, when you want to adjust, adjust your fast from high to, to low, there's that lever right behind uh, Sam, you had to undo that, change the belt, slide the shield back on, and away you went. Now we've got it up here on top of the ladder, or the cab platform. There's two knobs. 
So the inside one is for your feed accelerator, the front piece here. So if you're running in uh, wheat, you're gonna wanna be in second gear. If you're running in soybeans, you're gonna wanna be in first gear. You walk out of the cab, open that door, shift it. There's also neutral, so for serviceability, if you wanna be able to spin that over to change out beaters uh, or wings, you can. The next knob over is the rotor. We went from a two-speed rotor of S-Series to a three-speed. And you, instead of having to come down and go to the back here and you climb up and you had to work that rod back and forth to get it to shift, it's, it's right here, easier to shift. We've got first, second, neutral, and third gear. Again, depending on what ranges you want to run, um, I would say for this area, we're probably with corn, you're looking at probably first gear, potentially second. Um, and then if you're getting small grains, we're going to want to be in third gear. Uh, moving back from there, the, uh, the separator. So we've got two rotors on each side, and with that, we have twice the concaves. Something on X-Series, uh, you can get Condex for S-Series that are half width. X-Series, you can get, if it's a small wire or large wire, they're going to be half width concaves. Round bars are still going to be the full width. However, there's a cradle, and, and on S-Series, when you used to put your concaves in, you go to this right side over here, and you put your latch pick, you put your little ice pick in, and then you put the uh, over center clip. This one here with that cradle, you're going to slide it into the cradle, and then when it slides in that cradle, you'll end up running some bolts through the bottom, and it's going to be open on the spine, what we're calling the spine as the center. Set the rotor, set the concave in, hits the spine, bolt it down, and then you can lift it all up into the Z bar. Um, I encourage you guys to come take a look at this uh, either now or later at some point today. Um, and how, that's how it's changed. This is a round bar, so it's, it's still the full width. Um, but I can point out to you where the cradle is and how that works. Uh, the separator grates going back, uh, they're cast HDs, great standard. Uh, when you're going to corn, uh, same as S-Series, there are spacers for the back, for the first three grates, the fourth grate in the back. Uh, you're not going to put grates in because of the tailings return. It will interfere with it. As we continue to talk about the separator and we kind of go into the shoe, uh, grain's going to come out of the concaves and instead of going to your cross aug or your conveying augers of an S-Series, we have a front step pan. So gone are the days of wearing those augers out, the bearings, um, trying to get more reliability and simplicity out of this. So it hits the front step pan and it'll, and it'll work its way back. We have an adjustable pre-cleaner inside here. Um, most guys don't ever really adjust them, but if we get into certain conditions, uh, it's an option that we can do to either pinch it down or open it up wider. Uh, I, there's a little, uh, I believe it's an 18 millimeter headed bolt that's inside on this, on this side that will allow you to adjust that pre-cleaner, open or close. Again, uh, I encourage you to come take a look at and the inside of this machine. Uh, working its way back, we have a 36% more cleaning area, so we widen up the feeder house, we widen up the chassis of this machine, so we're able to get a wider shoe. Uh, something you'll notice if we put our heads in the back of the machine, how wide the chaffer elements and the sieve elements are. Uh, we've got to have two RSA motors in order to actuate the left and the right side of the chaffer just because one motor wasn't going to have enough torque to do it now. So something to keep an eye on on the serviceability side uh, is the potential they could get left side and right side could get out of whack by a millimeter or two. I don't really see it ever getting really bad, but again, for fighting certain conditions, it's something that we need to look at as a potential problem. Um, not often, and I'm not expecting it, but I want you guys to be aware um, going in that your left and right side of your, of your chaffer and your sieve could be tweaked a little bit, and we'll just have to do another calibration, uh, and reset them to true value, and go from there. Uh, we also re redesigned the fan. So what we have now is uh, basically four squirrel cage, I would call them squirrel cage fans, instead of the one solid piece fan. Like a 9600. Yep, so by going to these uh, smaller fans, we have two openings. On the top is a smaller opening. We're getting a lot more velocity of air. And then on the bottom side is where we're getting volume. 
So we've got more velocity to help with the cleaning initially as we get that, that thicker material uh, coming out of the concaves. We'll get more velocity to get more airflow through there. And as it works its way back, we're getting more volume. So I encourage you to come up, take a look at how that is set up. It's, it's not the easiest to see, but it, you can tell the two different openings here on the fan. As we continue to work our way back, uh, so this here is our tailings elevator. Now S-series, we had uh, clean grain and uh, tailings on the right-hand side. Clean grain is still on the right side on X, but our tailings is over here. Just when we went wider uh, and bigger, we ran out of room, so we had to kind of accommodate best we can. So we're bringing our tailings back this way. We still have a rethresher, same as our 780s, 790s. From the rethresher, then we're going right back to the return pan and back through the shoe to clean one more time. Uh, cameras, tailings camera on the back here. Uh, we are running through some supply chain issues on cameras. Uh, hopefully that it gets rectified sooner than later, but I'm sure as everyone's aware, the world we live in today is not as easy as it used to be. Um, going with that, you cannot swap cameras between S series and X series if you're trying to rob Peter to pay Paul. Uh, currently, the way the electrical is set up uh, and the signals are different between the two cameras. You can take a camera from an X-series machine and move it to another X-series, and the same with S, but you cannot intertwine the two. Just something to be aware of. Uh, as kind of the grain is going to go to the clean grain elevator and up in the grain tank, we'll talk about that on the other side. The auger, uh, we've got a 31 and a half foot auger, which is what you're going to need if you're running a 50 foot head. Um, if you're going to 45 foot, you can go to 20 and a half, but again, this machine is going to get more acres done with a 50 foot out front. And if you're ordering a machine, I would just go 31 and a half and uh, just, just so you have the option down the road. Not many people are ordering 28 and a half, um, but we also offer a 26 foot auger as well. Um, that's something we, fight, we see more over in Europe just because of their regulations and size. But 31 and a half foot folding auger, uh, adjustable spout. So that allows, combined with machine sink, uh, where you're controlling the grain cart, you can control that cart forward, backwards, left or right, but you can also, from the uh, hydro handle, I usually use the encoder, you can kick it over or closer so you can really maximize uh, filling that cart without having to sacrifice speed of slowing down or going faster to, to match the uh, cart. Something else that's nice on the X-Series uh, is the fact that we implemented cross auger or basically unloading auger clean out. So it's going to take a little bit of getting used to coming from an S-Series. Um, not many times, but you hit the engage button, the auger kicks on, cross augers kick on, your main unloading auger kicks on. You hit the button again to shut off. It's going to shut off the cross augers in the grain tank but the main unloading auger is still going to be running for, I want to say it's probably five to seven seconds. It's going to clean out the grain in that auger. Whereas S-Series right now, you hit the button, it's going to shut the cross augers and the main unload auger. So now you're able to clean out that auger um, before, and if you want to leave it out, you don't have all that weight sticking out there. Um, if you get in a situation where we need to shut grain off now, double tap, and it's basically an emergency, it'll shut both the cross augers and the main auger uh, off. So it's a really nice feature. It will take a little bit of getting used to when you go to top off the cart the first time going from an S series filling to X, but it's something I think everyone has uh, really enjoyed and a, a great feature. So tracks, uh, we used to, when we first came out with tracks, uh, we had ATI tracks and you were only limited to 18, 18.6 mile an hour. Um, Going back, I think in the model year 19 S series, we went to SUSE tracks, which allow us to go up 25 mile an hour. Uh, one thing to note with tracks is that with a 16 year old folding corn head on, uh, I believe it's 25 miles of roading. We uh, recommend to get out and throw some talc on just because the heat generation with that much weight, 16 row folding out there, um, it, it gets hot warm. Nine RXs are similar. I mean, they they can go probably a little longer, but with, with tracks and you're not in a dusty environment and you're roading, uh, it's encouraged to have some talc to throw in it, or pull into a field. Dust is the lubrication on tracks. So when you're roading and you're not getting any dust or if gravel, if you're on gravel, that would help. 
but when you're on hard pavement roading, uh, something to be mindful of is to keep an eye on your temperature of your tracks. So the 13.6 engine, uh, S, our S series is 13.5. Uh, going forward, we have a 13.6 new engine, deer design, uh, more similar to our nine liter. It's not a 13.5 punched out. It's more similar to the nine liter in reliability. Uh, we'll be running at 1900 RPM instead of the 21, 2150 you're used to of a 13.6. Uh, part of that is our fuel, uh, how we're getting some of our efficiency out of this engine is running a lower RPM. The other way we're getting our efficiency is through the belts that we're using. If you notice, especially in this back side, we do have a lot of belts. However, the most efficient power transfer that we've found is belts. We're not having to power more, more hydraulic motors and fluids and pumps. Um, so that's why we went to a belt design. Uh, the feeder front. house is variable speed again, right? Feeder house is variable speed. That's up front here. The drive in this long belt that runs up to the front. It is a long belt. Uh, have not had uh, major issues with uh, problems with that belt being that long. No one's had uh, anything bad to, to have happen, I guess. It's, it's shown to be very reliable, but it is a long belt. When it runs from here all the way down to the front end uh, of the feeder house. Uh, as we kind of work our way back, so we've got a lot of belts there, but that's going to be your chopper, your rotor, yeah, your front yeah, I mean, end, they're only like 50 all kind of in one spot. If you need them. Yeah. The <laughs> air chutes are bigger. Uh, we're trying to vent out the, the, the shoe to help with our uh, back pressure, to help with our cleaning. Uh, it does no good to have a bunch of air if you've got nowhere for it to escape. So we've widened up or made bigger openings for our uh, shoe to breathe. We still have our emission system. No way of getting around that. Uh, time will tell if we're going to regret death shortages or how that may play out, but um, still going to be using the same emissions that we have with our S series and uh, our tractors today. Except for it's mounted sideways and comes out the other side. This is true. So if, we, if you go up top, you'll notice that instead of the exhaust coming out the back, it's going to be up front on the right side. Uh, there's a tip that sticks out kind of basically in front of the cooling package. Uh, of the engine. If we, if you get a chance, it's going to be tight in here, but I encourage you to come in and check out the, the shoe. There's a shoe shaft that runs across and that's what's going to, uh, for our swingers and our pitman arms, the shoe shaft runs and brings power from the left side to the right side. So we're driving the shoe equally. Uh, you'll see that when you get in there as well as our tailboard is different. Uh, we have six loss sensors now instead of, uh, having, Lost sensors on each side of the S series. We're running the, across the whole tailboard. We also changed the way that the grain uh, hits the lost sensors. We've got a frog mouth design. Uh, it allows more, keeps most of the material and grain out and allows the seed to hit strike it. Just the way the curvature is, it allows seed to go in but keeps the straw and sticks and stuff from being able to get down into it. Uh, I encourage you to take a look at that. The chopper, same as uh, well, not exactly the same, but it's the uh, same concept as our S-Series, two-speed chopper, high-low. Um, it is, there is a cooler up above to keep it lubed, the way that the hydraulics uh, system is set up. We are different than our S-Series, where we kept our, S-Series had our main engine gear case and our hydraulic reservoir are two separate uh, places for oil. It's all one here. Our main engine gear case, hydraulic, we're all pulling out of one reservoir at the end of the day. Um, checked by the dipstick, right? Checked by the dipstick. So uh, we go up top, there's a sight glass on the hydraulic reservoir. You need to make sure that there's oil in there. However, to check the overall system, we're going to the main engine gear case dipstick. Put black tape over it, the sight gauge. Do that. So, uh, but that is where you're gonna check it. As I continue back here, so the chopper, um, depending on if you're going to be dropping straw or not, there are two different residue packages we offer, deluxe and premium. So this one's a premium. It has the ability to drop the straw from the top, separating the chaff uh, through, through the spreaders here. Uh, on your deluxe, it's going to be similar to an NAPC uh, S-Series where you, you got to raise the chopper, put it in neutral, and it's just going to drop both chaff and straw out the back. So. 
something, uh, depending on what kind of conditions you're into uh, or what you're doing, might determine what you would want in your machine. Uh, you can drop with both, it's just overall what, what would you rather have. Um, spreader wise, we're going to be the same despite whether you go deluxe or premium. Using paddles and to get our range, to get out to that 50 foot, we use shrouds. So if you want to get wider, we're going to open them up more. If you want to be more narrow, we're going to close them in. Um, that is how we're both deluxe and premium, how we're going to be spreading out that residue. We do have cameras come direct from the factory, I already put in one in the rear here and this black fascia piece, the unloading auger, and there should be one in the grain tank as well. Uh, comes already installed from the factory. S-Series is a, a kit that gets put on during PDI. Um, something that's, that's nice to already have done direct from the factory. Something I sh should have pointed out when we're up in the front here, the 1100 and the 1000, the two series we offer in X9s. So 1100 is gonna have that extra flip up piece in the front and back that you see that little black piece on top of the grain tank. We're gonna get another 40 bushel. So 460 is 1100 and 420 uh, is what the 1000 grain tank capacity level is. Power wise, we're going to use about 50, 50 to 70, depending on if you're doing peak or rated horsepower. Um, the other thing you're going to notice is uh, we go from a single turbo on the uh, 1000, we have a dual turbo on the 1100. Also, we're, we're going to have two different uh, unload rates. So the 1100 is going to have a 5.3 bushel uh, a second unload, and the 1000 is going to be a little bit slower at 4.6. So just, the, those are probably the key differences between the 1100 and the 1000 grain tank, the unload rate, and then overall power. Any questions on that? When the feeder house comes off, right? The feed accelerator comes with it? Yep. So the feed accelerator will come with the feeder house and then I'll open it up right to the, the rotors there. Uh, there is only one chain on this machine. It's right here, the drive chain. Um, similar to S-Series, we have two sprockets, however these are 18 and 22 tooth depending on what conditions you're in. Uh, similar, same way to swap them, detention ch chain, uh, pull the coupler, pull the sprockets, flip it, put it back together, put this lock on, tighten your chain. Uh, it is a continuous 80 uh, O-ring chain. Um, one thing to check as you did on S series is to check the, as it's running, you're gonna end up getting some slack in it. So come back here. Uh, you want about 18 to 25 mil of space. Basically don't let it rub on the poly. That's, I mean, you wanna be above that. So 18 to 25 is the recommended uh, gap that should be right here. Uh, the mid floor, you wanna check that. There is an indicator uh, behind the spring. Both sides, you need to tighten evenly. Uh, off the indicators here, but there is a spot when it hits this indicator on the frame itself, it's time to, time to change that out. Um, same with the chain, when it's maxed out, stretched, it's, there's no half lengths, it's get a new chain and we'll start over again with uh, tensioning. Working further back, uh, this side is where kind of controls our cross augers. Um, you see the pulleys running to each cross auger there. Combine advisor, our cameras are here. We're kind of touching that on the other side. Uh, serviceability, uh, especially for the service techs here. Uh, when S series, you'd have to feed out your augers on your tailings and uh, clean grain. Now we, there's a plate here you can pull off, and you just got to take the bearing off the other side, and then you can pull the whole, uh, this whole plate with the bearing still attached and the auger out. Another thing, if you guys wanted to get it, look underneath there, the clean grain and the tailings have toolless uh, drop pans. So basically it's just a quarter turn and you can go underneath there, hit all the quarter, quarter turns and it'll drop down. Um, again, trying to improve some serviceability things. Going back to the uh, cooling package here, something that needs to be noted. Uh, if you want to open up this cooling package door, the way that the belt is ran for the rotary screen belt, we need to adjust, pull this, and basically it will take that belt off the pulley that's coming from the engine. From Latch there, on the back. There's a hinge back here. You 
giving you access to the cooling package. Something on this 13.6 that we have now is a reversible fan pitch. So there's some logic to it. Uh, when you disengage separator, you're gonna hear a whoosh. That's because the engine fan is reversing its pitch and blowing air out. So basically to help keep that cooling package clean and free of debris, uh, whenever you shut the separator off, it will do that. And then it's also got some uh, algorithm in there that every 15, 20 minutes it will do that. But you won't, when you're harvesting, you won't even notice it other than maybe you see a puff of dirt come out on the back right side. That'll be your indicator. Also, the first time it might scare you uh, or you throw somebody back there and say, hey, watch this and uh, give them a little show. And there's a service, right? You can do a service reversal for 10 or 15 display, seconds. There is a way to, yep, if you're running in some issues or you want to command it yourself, there is a way to do it yourself um, outside of the logic. Uh, if we went up top, I kind of talked about the hydraulic reservoir there. Um, the grain tank's going to have uh, a easier cross auger covers. So if you're into some high moisture corn um, and you're worried about shearing bolts, uh, there's a couple of quick levers you can do and set that down lower so it's not bringing in as much grain. It's not going to have as much torque load on it. Um, then when you get into some drier stuff, you can move it back up. Or if you need to do some servicing, you can pull those off pretty easy. Um, we, tried, we tried to make improvements uh, on serviceability. But overall, this machine was designed for productivity, efficiency, and grain quality. And the def tank's great, big and black, and when it's hot out, it gets hot and throws the code and derates you. Uh, it, keep fresh def in there, it keeps it cool. Yeah, you keep fresh def. Uh, that is something that we're actually seeing uh, down in uh, wheat, on the wheat run right now, uh, something we're working on. But it's something, a good point to be mindful of is uh, keep it full, keep it fresh, and... Uh, it, it can happen. We're hoping to have a fix here sooner than later because it's something that's uh, definitely showing up very, very much so uh, down south right now on wheat runs. So something, I guess, if you guys have any HDs from last year, um, there is a software update uh, to those. Basically, the logic for if you hit the E stop button when a rock came on the belt, you would hit the stop, but the belts would slow down instead of stopping. So you just kind of hope that it wouldn't make it to the feed drum. Uh, we've improved that as well as I mentioned before about the skid shoes. Uh, they've updated the pressure tables on how that flexes uh, <clears throat> to get better wear life out of the uh, shoes. Something I think I did forgot to mention on the HD is uh, we offer a two speed feed drum center section. So when you're doing soybeans uh, and you're hearing wind, hearing hit the windshield, you can slow that down so it doesn't do that. Um, there's two speed option on there. It's on the side of the gear case. I apologize for not pointing that out. It's just a knob, push in, push out, low, high. Any questions? I mean, I, I kind of went fast for the sake of time. I really do encourage you guys to take a look at the chevron underneath here, how that is. Uh, hop on the other side there, look inside the shoe, go from the back and look in the shoe, climb up top. Uh, there's, there's some similarities to S-Series, but there's also a lot of improvements to S-Series. Um, I think you'll come to find that as you get a chance to, to get around these machines. 